The happiest day of his life was when the mob firebombed his car, except for the fact his golf clubs were in the back and the Volvo wasn't insured. To Ned Day, this was proof that he was really getting under someone's skin. When the bumper stickers appeared days later, it was even better. Uh, it does not demonstrate uh, a great deal of menace to sneak up in a parking lot in the dead of night and attack an un unarmed car. Going for the spare. He was the son and namesake of a world champion bowler, but drifted into a surly life on the mean streets of Milwaukee, where he bartended at mafia owned clubs, married a stripper, and worked for a tout service. In his late 20s, he stumbled into journalism. A side jaunt to Las Vegas in the mid 70s convinced Ned that this was the place for him. He took a $150 a week job writing for the North Las Vegas Valley Times and soon became bigger than. Than the paper itself. Mostly, he went after the mob, relentlessly tormenting them. He was hired away by the Review Journal, where his column became mandatory reading, sort of a combination of John L. Smith's everyman eloquence and John Ralston's political savvy. At the same time, he took on another job, managing editor of KLAS-TV, where he molded the careers of many budding journalists. No one could parody Ned like Ned. He was a thespian of the highest order as he pummeled the powerful in on-air commentaries and then became the co-anchor of the town's first 5 o'clock newscast. He was a free spirit. Spirit, a wild man with bad habits, but at his core, factors. a reporter. It is the most important thing that news people do. Maximize the flow of information to the people. In 1987, Ned met Mary Ottman, fell in love, and went to Hawaii for a vacation. He'd been working for months to clean up his lifestyle, but a snorkeling adventure proved too much of a strain on his heart. He died in the surf. The news hit Las Vegas like a tidal wave. Good evening, everybody. This is the toughest story we've ever had to report. Channel 8 anchorman Ned Day is dead. Police say he collapsed on the beach of a popular snorkeling area. The whole town turned out for Ned's services, the rich and powerful, the down and out. Colleagues, governors, hookers, you name it. Ned would have loved it. 20 years later, it's amazing how often his name still comes up, weekly, in fact. There are the old photos to remind us, a business card, precious columns now a bit brown around the edges, history books that include his name, and posthumous awards. But there are two things he'd be most proud of, his continuing legacy as an inspiration to hard-hitting journalism and the women in his life, Mary Ottman, who never married but lives happily in Missouri, and Noel, their daughter, who was born months after Ned's passing, now an honor student in college with plans to obtain a medical degree so she can help the poor and powerless. Ned would have liked that. George Knapp, Channel 8 Eyewitness News.